Hey folks, welcome back to another Lord of the Rings uh, action figure review. We've got this one from Diamond Select Toys. It is Gandalf the Grey, um, one of the more recent uh, releases alongside the uruk -hai. Um Neither of those figures come with a Build-A-Figure part, so now that they've got Sauron out, Sauron out the way, um, you know, maybe maybe build figures aren't something they're going to go ahead with again. Um, unless, I don't know, unless they come up with some other ideas. Um, but I do believe they sort of sort of quietly revealed um, the uruk -hai Lertz. Um, I think it was Lertz. Um, and Boromir. So they're continuing on with this line and I'm more than happy for them to take their sweet time with it because, um, you know, I really like these figures. And if I get the very least complete the fellowship I'll be very very happy so Boromir another one off the list which is fantastic and then you know Sam Mary Pippin be fantastic ones to get to afterwards um you know for other characters you know Saruman I think is important Gandalf the White um you can do that later on um but to get the sort of initial crew from Fellowship of the Ring in the can um I think that works well but yeah Gandalf's a really, really nice figure. Really sort of solid. He's tall. The paint-ups are fantastic. Um, I really love love it a lot. I wish there was a little bit more sort of flexibility in some of the plastic they use for, you know, particularly robes. Like, this is very sort of... It's not a hard plastic, but it's not soft either. Um, imagine you could, you know, shape it a little bit with a bit of hot water or, or a hairdryer, but, yeah, it's sort of... Even down here, like, if this was a little bit more of a softer plastic, like around here, just to enable a little bit more movement with the legs, uh, I think that'd be a big benefit to these figures. But, um, you know, as display pieces, they're fantastic. Um, if you saw my Ring Wraith review um, some months ago, they had a sleeve issue, and Gandalf has it a little bit. Um, so when he's holding something, the sleeves, you know... The way they've sculpted it is so that when his arms are at rest, his sleeves just sort of hang. Um, and it's always been a problem with, you know, wizard figures. You know, Toy Biz had the same thing. Because um, they're sort of moulded, sculpted to pose a certain way. So when you start doing things like this and the sleeve sort of sticks up, it's a little bit um, uh, uneasy on the eye. <laughs> so to say. Uh, so yeah, it kind of makes him holding his accessories, which do have, you know, a long hilt on the sword, which we'll get a look at shortly, and his staff. Um, a little bit of, you know, the hand's not, for starters, the hand isn't pushed in all the way, just because if I do that, it's restricting movement. And um, the hinge on the wrist sort of swings inwards like that. So if you're able to pivot it out and have it sort of come up and down, that'd be a huge benefit. Um, so I don't know if Diamond Selector watching, <laughs> I doubt it, but, um, that's one little bit of feedback I'd give for figures that have the, uh, long, longer sort of sleeves, um, and I don't want to make any jokes about wizard sleeves, because, you know, it is what it is, um, but yeah, if we were able to get that sort of, that hinge up and down, just so, you know, you could rock that back and forth and get it away from that sleeve, and, uh, yeah, I think that would be fantastic. But one little thing I did do is I did run some, like, boiling kettle water over the sleeve and just sort of pushed it in a little bit, just to sort of push it back. Um, and that did give, definitely gave it a little bit more room. Um, but, yeah, he does come with a change of hands. So he comes with two sort of resting open hands like that and then two gripping hands. So you can have him, you know, holding his staff and his sword... Uh, Glamdring, just had to refresh my memory, so you can have him sort of holding both at the same time. His hat is removable, I just, I have a sort of just a little bit of blue tack on there at the moment, but it's, uh, it's a nice sculpt, I think it looks good. Draw some little eyes and a mouth on it, and it could be the sorting hat from Harry Potter, but let's not cross franchises. So yeah, really fantastic face sculpt there of Sir Ian McKellen as Gandalf the Grey. Um, one thing that did sort of bug me a little bit, if we zoom in, it's the dots on these eyes, like the black dots on the pupils. They almost give the illusion of eyes sort of rolling in the back of his head a little bit. But 
I think they've gone with the, the idea that his top eyelids are sort of, you know, Ian McKellen, who was getting on in age, you know, still an absolute master of his craft. But, you know, as with everyone else on this planet, when they get older, you know, your eyelids start to bat sag a little bit. So I think they're just sort of showing that a little bit. And, um, you know, it's it's not a big deal. It's, it's certain light um, when it hits in certain shadows. It's sort of like, oh, it's a little bit strange. And I thought about just, you know, just adding the tiniest little dot a little bit lower um, just to accentuate those pupils a little bit. But other than that, like the sculpt, the paintwork, you know, you got these sort of soft reds and oranges in the skin tone. Not oranges, but, you know, pinks and stuff like that, just to sort of show where his aging is. So it's, it's really nicely done. The sculpt is fantastic. Um, again, set in a pretty solid sort of hard plastic that doesn't allow a lot of movement. So you're not going to get a lot of side to side with this guy. Um, but that's okay. He also comes with his bag, which you're able to pop off the head, pop off the, the sort of his longer sort of hooded robe there, and then dress that over the top of the shoulder so it sort of sits underneath. And it just tucks away at the back there. It looks really nice. Um, otherwise, you don't have to display it at all. But it comes it comes off the figure. So, yeah, you've got to kind of work work it onto the figure that way. Um, but, you know, to pull apart a figure to put an accessory on. It's, it's a little bit of a pain. It would be a lot of pain for, for some people. But, um, you know, we got there in the end. So, let's take a look at Glamdring. We'll stand him back there for the moment. So, yeah, reasonably nice. Um... A little bit of sort of blue paint in the uh, in the cracks of the thing, but most of it, mostly, I think this sword is just cast in this sort of silver plastic, and it works. It's fine. It's not a big deal, but it does slot nicely into the scabbard or the sheath. Which looks nice. Again, a little bit more flexibility with this as well, just to sort of aid in some posing, you know, maybe the option to remove it, so just have Gandalf out of war mode. Um, yeah, plenty plenty of other options, you know, they could do with these figures, just to... I'm sure it wouldn't break budget too much. <laughs> um, but yeah, sort of basic pants, boots are pretty simple, you know, you don't need extra detail on them, because they are hidden by this really nicely um, sculpted sort of dress robe here, all the sort of highlights on the outside just really make it look good. I'm really looking forward to, to taking him out outdoors. Um, yeah, the last few days I have been stuck inside with the Rona, so they're coming at the end of it now. So I'm looking forward to getting out, finding some cool um, Middle Earth inspired locations. We've got his hat back on. And I like him both ways. I like him with the hat and I like him without it. I think it's, you know, really nicely done either way. Yeah, I did need some blue tack on the hat just to sort of sit it on because it does just sort of, there's no sort of grab um, where it doesn't sort of just grip nicely. It's kind of got to sort of stick it down just to stop it from falling off all the time. Really like his staff. I was trying to work out out close. Just trying to work out whether this little sort of square bit here was his pipe. Doesn't appear to be. Um, because yeah, he does store his pipe in there. It might be. It might be. But yeah, if you can get him, get him with his pipe, that'd be cool. Have him and old Bilbo. Having a bit of, bit of wacky tobacco. <laughs> it'd be great. But yeah, loving loving this figure. I never got a Toy Biz Gandalf the Grey. I had a couple of Gandalfs the White, Gandalf the White. Um, so never got a grey one. And then when The Hobbit came out and they and the Bridge Direct did their um they sort of did a few six, six inch scale figures. I never got the Gandalf for that either. Um So yeah, to have this one in hand now, it's it's really nice. Despite those sort of limitations, but you know, for the most part, he's going to sit on the shelf and look awesome. So I'm very, very happy. 
hope you've enjoyed this review, guys. This has been Gandalf the Grey in all his greyness. Even just the little still sort of nail that's been bolted through his staff there looks really nice. It's sort of weathering on the back there. And it does. His, his staff is painted up, so it does look like a stick. Like, it's really nicely done. You'd almost just get a stick out of the garden and just, you know, mess up the end and you'd be good. But, yeah, despite the plastic on the back, I love the way it sort of sits. And it looks like fabric. They've done a great job, Diamond Select. So well done. I, uh, looking forward to the next lot. The uruk High is a uh, really, really exciting one to get and then um yeah Lertz and Boromir if they if they do come into fruition I dare say they will bring them on bring them on diamond select don't let this line slip so much potential all right thanks for watching folks I do appreciate your time and we'll see you again very soon for some more videos till then may the rings be with you always